Hi folks, hope you are doing great. Today in this video, I am going to talk about O2 token introspection. Token introspection is defined in the RFC 7662 under the IETF OAuth working group. It talks about how you can examine an access token or a refresh token and find further details about it. I assume uh, you are familiar with the O2 architecture. And I will uh, quickly explain how token introspection fits into uh, the OO flow. Let me quickly draw a diagram. So we have the authorization server which issues the access tokens and a client app then the resource server. Following any of uh, the OAuth grant types, OAuth client can get an access token. It can be authorization code grant type, uh, implicit grant type, uh, password grant type, or even client credentials grant type. So finally, you get the token. You get the access token and refresh token. Uh, you, you will get both or either just the access token uh, based on the grant type you follow. Somehow you get the token and you pass that token to the resource that you want to access on behalf of the end user. Then resource server has to validate this token. To validate the token, resource server has to talk to the authorization server. Now the authorization server will validate this token and will return back the information about this particular token. This API which is exposed by the authorization server to the resource server is the introspection API. In other words, resource server uses the introspection API exposed by the authorization server to find further details about the token. The authorization server will return back uh, who the client associated with this particular token, then whether the token is active or not, the scopes associated with the token, and the end user who gave consent uh, for this particular access token. Likewise, the authorization server can return back uh, further information about the access token to the resource server. Then the resource server can make a much informed decision whether to let this particular client access the resource or not. Let me quickly go to the RFC. So these are the things that you will see in the introspection response. It will return you back whether the token is active or not. Then the scopes associated with the access token, then the client ID, username, who uh, the, the, the name of the user who gave the consent to the client, then the token type and the expiration issued at and not before. Uh, then the, if the access token is a self-contained access token, in other words, if the access token is a JWT itself, then the introspection response can include further information like the subject element from the JWT, audience element from the JWT and the issuer of that particular JWT and also the JTI or the identifier in the JWT. So these are the information uh, the author sensor will return back from the introspection response. Based on these parameters, a resource server can make a decision. So here is an example response. Okay. So this is another important thing is extension fields. So if authorization server decides to include further information about this particular uh, uh, token, then it can use its own set of uh, uh, extensions. But uh, these are not uh, predefined uh, standard uh, fields. Uh, whatever the fields here. Uh, the resource server and authorization server should know how to interpret them. Okay, and and when you interpret uh, uh, an introspection response, if there are any fields that you don't uh, understand, then you can you can simply ignore them. So let me let me show you how this works. I am using WSO2 identity server for this particular demo. If you hear about uh, the identity server for the first time. It's an open source identity and access management product 
released under the most business friendly Apache Turbo license. You can go to wso.com products identity and access management and download the uh, identity server latest version which is IS530 and by the time of this recording we are working on uh, the very next version of identity server which is 540 which will be released in a couple of weeks time. Once you download the identity server you need to have JDK 1.8 plus uh, in your environment and also you need to set the Java home that's it after that you can simply start the server. I have already downloaded it you can see I am inside is home directory and bin directory and now I can start the server with wso.server.sh it will take around 40 to 50 seconds to get started in my local machine and uh, we'll start on uh, the default HTTPS port 9443 if you want to change it you can do it by editing the repository conf uh, carbon xml file and change the value of the offset parameter and Adin server comes with a default embedded user store which is an LDAP and in the production environment you can deploy it over any of your existing user stores over LDAP and if it's an active directory we can deploy it over that too and also it can be a database okay we are almost there okay it got started it got started in 51 seconds now I can log into the management console of uh, the identity server using the URL https localhost 9443 and login with default admin credentials admin admin. These credentials are coming from the embedded LDAP server. Now I need to create an OAuth application. To do that in identity server you need to go under service providers and click on add let's say OAuth app you can give any name here register then under the service provider I need to create an OAuth application click on inbound authentication configuration OAuth open ID connect configuration configure here I am not going to use uh, the code uh, grant type or implicit grant type so I don't need to give a callback URL I in fact did a complete video on all these grant types I'll share that link in the uh, in the description section of this particular video. Uh, since I'm not going to use uh, implicit and code grant types, I just uncheck uh, those uh, two grant types, so I don't need to give any uh, callback URLs. Just click on Add. Now my client app got created. I have my own client ID and client secret. Now I'm going to use set of curl scripts show you uh, uh, how to get a get an access token first using uh, password grant type and then how to validate that access token using the token introspection uh, endpoint of the WSO2 admin server which is acting as the OAuth authorization server in this case. You can download all these curl scripts from my uh, git repo if you go to this particular URL you don't need to remember this I'll put this URL to the video description below either you can clone this repo using a git clone or just download a zip file and then go to curl scripts OAuth here you can find all the OAuth uh, uh, all the shell scripts I am going to use in this particular demo okay so I I have all these uh, scripts in my local machine first thing you need to do is you need to go under the directory curl scripts and there you can find the script call env.sh okay let me open it up and here this script has all the variables that are being referred by other curl scripts what I am going to do is I just update this script with my uh, variables and their values and then I will source this file so all these environment variables will get loaded into my shell environment so other scripts can just refer those uh, values. So the token endpoint of the identity server is local loss 9443 or 2 token. Authorization endpoint is uh, which we don't use in this particular demo because I am not going to use the authorization code grant type or implicit grant type. 
So anyway, it should be local loss 9443 slash authorized. Then the introspection endpoint we are going to use, it is local loss 9443 and introspect. Others are we are not going to use in this demo. Then the unit then the client ID and the client secret. We need to update this with our values. Let's go to the identity server and our service provider. I'm copying the old client key and paste it here and then again the client secret paste it here and this is the username and password I am going to use in my password grant type and the scope redirect URI once again not uh, applicable here since I am not going to use the authorization code grant type that's all I need to do now I need to source this file Okay, then go inside the old directory. Now I'm going to use the password grant type. Let me show you that script first. Here you can see I'm, I'm referring to the environment variables from the shell script. So these are already being loaded to the shell, shell environment after I uh, source that particular uh, env.sh file. So I'm loading client ID and client secret. Then the username and password, all these are defined in the env.sh and the token endpoint URL is also defined there, scope is also defined there. When I just run this script, it should return me back the access token. Okay, so now I got the access token and the refresh token. Now I need to see uh, other properties associated with this particular access token by using the introspection endpoint of the WSO2 admin server. Let me open up that uh, shell script. So here you can see this endpoint is secured. You need to use a username and password. I am using the same admin admin. It can be any administrative username and password which is good enough to access this particular endpoint. right? So don't, uh, don't uh, uh, misunderstand this like uh, even though I am using the same username and password which I used to get the access token it is not the case this can be any username and password which is good enough to access the uh, token introspection endpoint of the WSO admin server and if you need you can change like you can use certificate based authentication here or even OAuth based authentication here to authenticate the resource server when it accesses the introspection endpoint of the authorization server then I need to load the value of the token parameter from the environment. So I need to export the access token I got from the previous uh, call to the environment and then I am invoking, I am passing this request to the introspect endpoint. Okay. So let me copy this access token first and export it to the token variable. Okay. Now if I just run introspect sh, it should return me back the information about the user. Scope is read, then token is active, token type is bearer, then expiration issued at client id, username, all these details are here in the introspection response. This concludes the demo today. If you have any questions, please post them under the comment section below this particular video. Thank you very much.